Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan. Each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time, training you to lead with courage. We are so happy to have you here. We are delighted and we uh, want to thank you for sending us your questions, your concern, especially your questions. Today, we are going to talk about finding courage in time of adversity. Many of you said, how do I understand or define courage? Am I a courageous person? In my daily life, how am I being called to live out my faith with courage? As Christians, we are called to share the gospel. We know that is our mission. We all know that. But few of us know that we are called to do an impossible mission. Only God can, God in us can accomplish that mission. Make no mistake. It's one thing to say that you love God, that you are Christian, and yet there is another thing to risk your own life for what God is asking you to do, especially during adversity, to share the gospel. For us as Christians, courage is God's power in us, nothing else. God's power in us to stand when everyone else wants to run to speak when everyone else is afraid to speak, to act when everyone else is paralyzed by fear, to take action or actions in the face of danger, to hold on God's moral uprightness when everyone else is tempted to compromise to share the gospel, Christ crucify, and nothing else, and be ready to die for Christ. Impossible? No, not with God. Let me explain it to you. Let me prove it to you. After all, I'm a lawyer too. As a child, I grew up under socialist and communist in Romania. I knew nothing but adversity, fear, and lies. Our entire world revolve around our leader and dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu. During the totalitarian regime of Nicolae Ceausescu, the most brutal and repressive regime, even by the socialist bloc standard, socialist and communist Romania was a lie, a land of lies. Dictator's word was law. Religious was tolerated only to keep up outside appearances, an internal, internal dissident was not permitted. Ceausescu's goal was to demolish churches, especially in, Romania, in Eucharist, to make room for his early palace. He declared himself God and told us that he brought us the golden era while we were starving to death in the cage in Romania and every citizen was required to agree with him. If you did not, you would face the full wrath of Ceausescu's secret police, Securitate, one of the most brutal secret police forces in the world. Simply put, Ceausescu turned my native country, Romania, into a prison land. We were not free to confront his lies or his regime lies, we live in a constant state of anxiety and, mis and mistrust as anyone could e easily and often arbitrarily denounce a neighbor, classmate, or a family member of making anti-government statement. Anyone who questioned or disagreed with dictator was considered a traitor to the government and to him and was either thrown in jail, killed, or simply disappeared. The socialist government even had spies planted in our churches. No place was safe. The best way to avoid trouble was to remain silent, question nothing, and try to blend in. Unfortunately, none of those threads were in my nature. I fought 
as an attorney against dictator Nikolai Ceausescu and his socialist regime. I took him to court to respect human and religious rights, and I won by the grace of God. And by the grace of God and by his power, I'm alive and the dictator is dead for more than 33 years. In Christ, I found the strength and the courage to advance along this pathway of life and to overcome difficulties and sufferings. You can read more about my journey of courage and victory in Christ in Socialist Romania, defending human and religious rights, and here in America in my memoir, Saving My Assassin. I hope as you read my memoir, Saving My Assassin, you can purchase it um, at virginiapradanbooks.com slash products slash book. As you read my memoir, you will be encouraged that you can find in Christ courage for your time of adversity. You will see reading my memoir how God empowered me to be courageous, how God changed me and changed my country, Romania, through me from socialist to a democratic country. And remember, God wants to do the same thing in your life. Christ is the source of courage, of power, and joy in our difficult time, even adversity. Christ is saying to us, to all of us, in John 14, 27, my peace, I give it to you. And by faith in Christ, we will be able to see his light with our heart, even when our eyes will see darkness and adversity around us. That's a secret. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. We are called to stand firm despite our powerless, because it is precisely at that moment in time that it is possible to recognize not only with our head but with our hearts that we are in God's hands too as the smallest sparrow is in God's hands too. In Christ, we can live courageously, never to fear the darkness or adversity around us, because we have the light of Christ in us and the power of Christ in us. Standing firm in Christ despite being powerless is certainly our greatest act of faith. We will encounter then Christ making us strong and courageous in his power. So the entire world will know that Christ is sovereign, no matter how powerless we might look. So ask yourself, if the secret of your heart were revealed publicly, would you have anything to fear? How do you react under adversity when you are unable to do on your own good thing despite of your own efforts. And remember God's promises in Joshua 1, 5 to 6. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore, swore to their fathers to give them. You see, our adversity in Christ's plan, it's nothing but uh, his given boot training camp to us. Yes, a rigorous, painful, and challenging time. They will make us walk into new routine and habits, Christ's new routines and habits, in order for us to mature physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and to grow in our relationship with Christ. During those times of adversity, we need to remain courageous and faithful steadfast in our devotion to the Lord as we battle feelings of doubt, fear, or intimidation. Christ 
I promise, will provide the strength and the hope not only to endure the hardship, but to make the changes that are required of us so we can claim the blessings of God, not only for us, but to others. We need to trust the Holy Spirit to transform us, according to Philippians 3.21, to change us so we can live a life honoring Christ to face every adversity in his power and for his glory. I want you to notice the three things that were required of Joshua and also for us to be required. Number one, making decisions that affect other people under his leadership and our leadership. Number two, keeping God's commands even as changes or adversity will appear on our path. And number three, remembering continually that God, the Lord, was with us and he is with us despite what adversity might indicate otherwise. The adversity of life or the storms of life will strike without warning. Surely, we will encounter times when we will need courage in all those three areas. We need to seek God, His wisdom, His hope and assurance to gain the courage we need to be victorious because He has already won the eternal victory for us. God commands us, you, to have courage over and over again through God's words to you. He assures you and us that he will be with us. He will not leave us. He commands you, do not be frightened. Do not be afraid. Have courage. Be courageous. David wrote in Psalm 118, 8 to 9, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust the princess. Psalm 125, 1 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like mountain Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. We serve a sovereign God, far more powerful than any ruler, any dictator, any sickness, any adversity, any obstacle, fear, or darkness we might encounter in life. As Paul wrote in Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you might abound in hope. Our hope during adversity or darkness is found in Christ alone. And his presence, in his presence, we will find courage to carry on. Therefore, adversity does not have to defeat you or us. Our adversity can be the springboard for your victory, our victory in Christ. How you handle your adversity with courage, will determine how you will live the rest of your life. Believe me, this process is not easy, does not come without paying the price of becoming responsible for living at the higher level with Christ. But once you have realized and accepted that you are called to live courageously, a live of significance, in Christ, then you cannot can no longer continue to live a lesser at the lesser level. If you need more help, please contact us at virginiapradanbooks.com. We are here to help you to live courageously. You can do that. Until our next Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan, each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time, training you to live with courage, be blessed, keep in touch, and remember, send us your questions. Everything that you need, if you need any help, please go to virginiapradhanbooks.com. And if you want to um, 
uh, buy the book, Virginia, uh, Saving My Assassin, go to Virginia Pradhan, books.com slash product slash book. You will be encouraged that in Christ you can be courageous and you can live a life of significance, not only for you, but for people around Christ in you will guide you every step of the way and you will live for the rest of your life courageously in Christ. Until next time of our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan every Wednesday at 10 o'clock Central Time, every Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time, leading you to live with courage. Be blessed and see you later. Bye-bye.